In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this dynamic chart that you can use to track metrics for your teams. Some of the features of this chart include being able to select between different teams or athletes, as well as expanding or collapsing the dates that you actually want to look at. This is going to be a really powerful chart if you are tracking metrics consistently and want an easy way to look at this data. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And in order to get this project going, what we're going to start with is some data. Now on the left hand side here, what I have is some data that I have formatted as a table, which includes an athlete name column, then the team by which that athlete um, belongs to, and then the date that the test was performed, and then just some hypothetical testing values. So we just have um, a one RM and that could represent really any lift we want. And then um, a vertical jump um, column. Now, before we dig into creating this chart, I just want to remind you that if you are finding any value in the videos, please like and subscribe to the channel, as well as follow me on social media and then share any content that you are finding helpful. And that really just helps this channel keep growing and allows me to keep making videos for you. So the idea of tracking a team trend came to me when I had a coach reach out and ask if any of my current pro products um, had the ability to do this. And I haven't actually made a team trend tracking tool yet because um, truthfully, it's a pretty easy process with how I'm going to show you today. But if there is some need for that product, I will make a team dashboard in the future. Now, in order to get this going, I've chosen to use Excel. And what we're going to do is take this table and I'm going to go to the table design here. And there is an option up here on the toolbar that says summarize with a pivot table. Now what a pivot table does is allows us basically to create a dynamic table that is expandable or contractible so that we can look at our data as averages, maxes, or really anything we want. So we're going to click this here and it's going to give us some options and it's going to ask us what our table range is. In this case, it is table 13 or the table that we have all of our data in. And then it's gonna ask us where we wanna put it. I'm gonna put it on this sheet here so that you can follow along easily. So I'll go to location. Let's just select this cell beside our table already. And then if we wanted to create a big data model, Excel has the ability to link many different data sources together and you can basically summarize them all in different tables. But for the purposes of this video, we're not gonna be doing that, but we would click that checkbox there. So when I hit okay now, what you're going to see here is this space that it basically takes up that gives us the option to add a pivot table. Now on the right hand side, yours might look a little bit different than mine, but what you're gonna see is all of the um, values or headers that we have in our table and then filters, rows, columns, and values. Now, filters are anything that we want to be able to filter the table by. In this case, that might be team, that might be athlete, or anything like that. So if I was to put maybe athlete in there, what you're gonna see is it gives me this option to now select whatever athlete I want to look at, and all of the values in the table will change corresponding to that athlete. For the purposes of this one, I'm not actually gonna have a filter, so I'm just gonna click on it and hit remove. But what we are gonna have is we're going to have some values. So let's actually take our 1RM and our vertical jump, and we'll put those in values. Let's move my table, so I'm just gonna move it up a bit. But we're gonna put those under values, and where this arrow is beside the values, if I click there and go to value field settings, what I can choose is I can choose whether I want a sum, a count, an average, a max, a min, a product, etc., of all of those values. For the purposes of this, because we're going to be looking at the average of the team across a data point, we're gonna choose average. And you can see it's changed this rate to average of 1RM. We'll do the same thing for vertical jump, value field settings, and average. Now in terms of rows, let's break this down by team. So if I add the team in there, what you can see is it gives me my badgers or my stingers, and it's going to give me the average of those values for that team. So that's an easy way to just get the average for team. 
Now you're gonna see it's giving me some other things here of grand total. I'm gonna actually take that out and I'm just going to go to, I believe it's design and under grand totals, I can just turn that off. And now we just have our um, badgers and stingers. But we want to be able to look at this by date as well. So I can take this date and drop it under team. And now you can see what we have is our badgers and we have January, February, March, April, stingers, January, February, March, April. And you can see that is my average for January for the badgers. That's my average for February, March, April. And my overall is right there. Same thing for stingers. And if we were to close this down, you can see that it now just gives me basically the um, average for that date. So if we're looking back at this pivot table, anything that is above in the hierarchy, you can filter underneath that by those values. Now, the last thing you want to, might want to know how to do is if I actually select all of these um, dates and right click on it, there's going to be an option to group. If I select this, because it is actually um, a date, it's going to give me the options to, to group it by seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, quarters, years. On the side here, you can see that it's already giving us months and date. Maybe I want to break this down by quarters and years as well. So maybe I'll hit okay there. And you can see now we could kind of close this off and it'll give us the average for quarter one and we can open that up and it'll give us the average for quarter two or maybe we want to close that all the way down to the year if we have many sort of um, years of data so that's an easy way to start to break that down by the different um, time periods so then one other thing we might want to do in here is I'm going to actually just remove quarters because I don't need that for this but underneath our values again, maybe I don't want it to say average of one RM. Maybe I just want to click on it, go to value field settings and change the name to maybe squat one RM and hit okay. So now it's going to change that field to squat one RM. And maybe I want this to be um, counter movement jump average. And I'll hit enter and change it there. Okay, so that's a quick way that we can change the names of these. Now, finally, what we're gonna do is make that chart that we had in the intro, and that's going to allow us to look at our data in just a little bit different way. So from here, I'll select this whole table, go to um, Power Pivot Analyze, or Pivot Table Analyze, sorry, and I'm gonna click the Pivot Chart option, and when I hit Enter, here's a pivot chart that it might give us, and I'm just going to stick that in the cells here so that we can see it. And right away, this is going to be a pretty dynamic chart. So I can actually use the plus and minus buttons on the side to open or close this chart. And when I do, it actually changes the pivot table. So that's a quick way that we can do this. And then the same way that we might with any other chart, I could click maybe this series, right click it, and go to change series chart type. And maybe I wanna make this, I don't know, some sort of line chart. And then if I double click on here, maybe I just wanna put that on a secondary axis, okay? So now we have this secondary axis and we have our vertical jump in orange and we have our squat one RMs in blue. And if we close it all the way down, that is the average for each team in 2021. Then we can do it by month, and then even by day. Now the final piece to this that I showed you in the intro is maybe I want to have buttons that I can actually just click on that allow me to select the different metrics. So if I go back to my actual pivot table and go to pivot table analyze, I can use this button here that says insert a slicer. And what I can do is slice by whatever I want basically. So let's choose team first, and it's going to give me this control here and I'm just going to resize it and if I click here there's an option to add the number of columns and that's going to allow things to be side by side so now using this I can select just the badgers or just the stingers or maybe I'll clear the whole filter and select both 
And then we're gonna do that one more time. We'll go to pivot table analyze, um, insert slicer, and let's now do it by the date. And I'll hit okay. And it's going to give me this one here. Let's put that underneath. And let's add a bunch of columns. And what I'll do here is just right click and go to slicer settings. And then I'm going to choose that I want to hide items with no data because you can see it's giving me all kinds of other dates that don't really have any data. So if I select that, hit okay. Now we just have our dates that are ha actually have data in them. And then maybe we only want to look at specific dates. So by holding control, I can select just the dates that I want to look at and work my way through there. So maybe I want to look at basically Jan 1st to April 1st and see what the difference is with just the badgers. So now with just a few clicks, I can see really what any data, whatever data I want. If I hover over it, it'll give me the actual value. And it just becomes a really easy way that you can track your team trends over time, visually or um, in a chart. And you can just provide this information to your coaches or use it to kind of um, audit your own training. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if it does, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out. I'm gonna to try to keep posting new videos. If you have any ideas, feel free to reach out on social media and let me know what kind of a video would help you out. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.